Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I am Dave the Cyber Guy. That's right, Dave Stevens. I teach for the University of Hawaii at Kapiolani Community College. I teach information technology, network security, and ethical hacking. And with me today is one of my colleagues, Assistant Professor Hal Colcheran, also an IT professor. And we call him Hal the Networking Guy. Welcome, brother. Thanks Thank for coming in. Thanks for having me back. Thanks again. for letting Thanks. me torture you again on the air. <laughs> <laughs> the is news of the day, the show that writes itself, right? <laughs> and Trump just keeps making it better. A lot of interesting uh, things going on. Uh, yeah, but let's start out with some good news. Uh, Brian Krebs is the security researcher, so I get his blog all the time. But NPR picked this up, you said, uh, and I, heard, I think I heard this too. The credit freezes now are free in all 50 states. So let's, let's go back in time for people in the cheap seats. Uh, you may have heard Equifax. Uh, lost a bunch of our data, got hacked, and uh, people want credit freezes because that data that, that they gave away, people could use it to become us and create other accounts being us, so identity theft. Mm -hmm. To protect against that, you can freeze your credit report so no one can apply for credit without you saying so, uh, but that's also you, so before you apply for any kind of credit, uh, you can unlock, but then you have to relock it. And then it used to cost, how much were you paying for that? It was $5 uh, each, each time. time that you unlock it and $5 to relock it. Uh, again, so, so right after Equifax, I, I was notified that my information was part of that breach. Yeah. So I went and uh, put a freeze on my, on my credit to, uh, I was able to do, you know, about maybe half of the credit bureaus uh, allowed me to do it, and they, they charge five dollars uh, each time. And uh, but a couple of the others, I, I wasn't able to accomplish it. Uh, e even though I tried, their the websites didn't work, or you'd end up, you know, on some phone tree that was just a dead end. Uh, but I, I I did put a, a a hold on the ones that I uh, that I could. And then, of course, I went uh, I switched uh, cell phone providers. And so, of course, they wanted to do. Oh, so you have to unlock. So I had to, They wanted to do a credit check, so I had to go unlock it, come back, let them do the credit check, go back and have it locked again. So there's you know ten dollars every time. So I'm 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 really happy to hear that at least it's it's free. I, I hope they can make it a little more streamlined too. Well, there was a cost to per go. organization too. Yeah, Equifax, this Trans is for Union. each one. Yeah. yeah. This is five dollars for each one that you unlock. But uh, when I change phone. Uh, Phone providers. I asked them which bureau are you going to use, so I only needed to unlock that one bureau. Did they tell you? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. They told usually, it, yeah. sometimes they check all three. So you have to unlock them all and put them on. That would have been thirty dollars, right? Both yeah. ways. But so I'm really happy to hear that. Now it's, it's free. free. Yeah. But I hope they can also do something to streamline it, so you don't have to go to you know six different you know. This is not sounding sites, fun. A different. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's like sticking your hand in a blender. It sounds like I. I'm yeah, not it's not fun. It. It's not easy to accomplish, <laughs> but. But it, you know, if if it comes down to it, it it could save me an awful lot of trouble. I mean, as opposed to if someone you know gets hold of my information and opens a bank account or gets a loan in my name or something, that could be a nightmare. So. It's interesting to note, though, that this this change had to be legislated. These companies would not do this for free. No. Even though one of them was solely responsible for one of the biggest breaches in the history of data. And it, it just amazes me that companies will not do the right thing. They'll charge for it mm -hmm. and, and keep digging customers for money until the law says you must do these things. And I, I just have to emphasize that because uh, there's a balance between deregulation and regulation. You can't just take all the regulation around, away from companies. You know, we were talking about the other night uh, when, when the EPA, before the EPA was around, uh, so many chemicals got dumped into the Cuyahoga River that uh, it got set on fire mm -hmm. at one point. The river was on fire. Yeah. So the companies don't do the right thing unless they're told to do the right thing, in my opinion, at least the bigger companies. Because uh, well, they're, they're in it for their own self-interest, yeah. That's not their that's goal. Business. Their goal is profit right. and to make money for their shows. It's, it's not to you know protect the environment. It's not to protect people. It's not to be good uh, uh, citizens. You know, that's, make money that's for the shareholders. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're there to make money, and, yeah. and, it, and if polluting makes money, then it, it's 
it makes sense for that's them a, to. That's what they're going to do. I think they just think of it as collateral damage. <laughs> yeah, but we made money. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you do need some regulation to guide companies through. I, I don't believe in over-regulating, but uh, we're not achieving a balance right now. We had to legislate yeah. this into effect. It's nice that the non-bipartisan Congress was able to push that, that through. Non-bipartisan. Yeah, there, there's, there. How much is double negative? It is split right down the middle, and uh, it was nice that they could actually do something. Let's go to other good news. Apple. Good you news. use Apple. I use Apple. Uh, the new iOS, Mac OS, TV OS, and Watch OS all came out. Um, but Mac OS is released on Monday. So they, they usually do this once a year, right? They release all the device software a week ahead of time. And then the Mac OS for the actual systems, the desktops and laptops, comes out a week later. Mm -hmm. And I upgraded to iOS 12, and I have seen absolutely no difference except in Siri. I don't know what's Siri. wrong that the IQ of that AI has sharply dropped hmm. since I upgraded to iOS 12, but that's my only warning. Siri seems to not know what I'm talking about. And it was it was just fine on iOS 11 the day before, but as soon as 12 hit, something's not quite tweaked into place. And this always happens. You know, we, we, we're going to go through this for a little while before they iron it out. Uh, I've already heard that the iOS 12.1 is uh, ready for a release, so they know about these problems. So we'll get an update any second now. Mojave, though, Mac OS Mojave, Looks pretty good. I'm, we're sure. running High Sierra right now. You have a, one of the latest laptops, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that's a good OS. I like it. It's got a lot of good features. And uh, the Mojave's coming out with dark mode. Really looking forward to this. Dark mode. Yeah, it, it switches the contrast of your screen so it's darker in places where you expect it to be light. And they also have a background. If you take the default background, it'll change according to the time of day. So it's a it looks like a, a high-res photo of a desert, the Mojave Desert, a, a sand dune. And in the morning, you'll see the sun coming in from one side. In the afternoon, it's blazing down in the middle. In the afternoon, you'll see it coming in from the other side. And at night, it's a nighttime view of the desert. Talk with about a full moon. bells and whistles. It is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, apprehensive about how much CPU juice that's going to yeah, take how up. Much is that, how much memory, how much CPU is that worth giving up? Right. For? Do I need that running in the background? Ah. It might be cool to see once. Yeah, but do you need that all the time? No, yeah, and especially if, uh, like with me, I'm multiple monitors, I'm going to have to have that repeated on multiple monitors that, yeah, it's going to take up a lot of cycles, yeah. That's like Windows, what was it, Windows Vista that had the arrow that did all the like, yeah, animation. Like, right, right. The first thing I would do is turn that off, and I gained <laughs> so many system resources back. All right. this memory, all the CPU cycles back. A lot of bells and whistles. So much faster, and I really didn't need all those fancy you know, animations and the bells and whistles. But, yeah. you know, if people like to see There's it, good stuff, too. They have uh, new stacks, a new desktop organizer. Uh, there's a new way to organize your files on the desktop. I can hardly wait to see that. I've seen that demo. Uh, iOS 12 now, and FaceTime, you can have up to 32 participants at the same time. Nice. That's a lot Basically, of WebEx, you know, and, and you can do it for free on FaceTime. Uh, haven't tested it, but we have times when we can test that out. We should give it a test. Even WebEx. WebEx, uh, the, the free version of WebEx has a limit of like three, three right? participants. The host yeah, and you two. You need to pay yeah. and get the commercial version to go, to go beyond and that. It's not so. cheap. But yeah. FaceTime is still completely free, right? That's right. So. It's completely free. So it's a free service. I don't know what it's going to be like on low bandwidth. So we'll see if the cellular bandwidth can handle it, or do you have to be on Wi-Fi? But I've seen a demonstration of it while you're using it. Um, whoever's talking comes to the forefront. So you see them, and nice. everyone else becomes smaller in the background. And then if you need to see somebody that's not speaking, you can tap on them, and it, and it comes up. And it's pretty nice. I like it. It's OK. Uh, Sounds good. I, I'm going to be the brave one and upgrade as soon as it comes out, because I'm, I'm one of those guys that I, I just got to know. I've got good backups. I can recover. I can roll back, so I'm going to be the guy that puts my nose out there and says, hey, show me what you got. You can let us know how it works out, and, and if you like it, then the rest of us You can safely roll follow me, right? I'll tell you when it's, uh, it's safe to come out of the woods. It usually takes up to a month before these th things are ironed out. With High Sierra, we had updates for several months after it came out, fixing little bugs, but one of the mm -hmm. scariest was a security bug that uh, in the High Sierra update, something got rolled back in the security 
and allowed uh, an old hack to work. So the security stuff is a little bit frightening. Uh, these operating systems have become so complex yeah. now that you know it's easy for things to creep in uh, that you know weren't anticipated. You fix one problem, it causes another problem somewhere else. So as you said, it, it rolls something back, and it's, it's, so it's it's normal to have you know patches to the patches. You do the update, yeah. and then you know oh, you have the to update. do the updates <laughs> to fix right. what happens. You know <laughs> what, what was caused I, by I the could, update. Uh, the engineers are probably going, oh, ah, oh, oh, yeah. did it again. Okay, we'll fix that next one. We'll run it on a minor version. <laughs> Uh, so updates are inherently um, complex because the OS is complex. I learned uh, a lot about um, radio frequency this week. I had a little issue. I'm, I was using the Mac uh, Magic Mouse 2, which is battery rechargeable battery uh, Bluetooth mouse. And I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get a little jerky. There's uh, some movement patterns that I didn't recognize. At first, I thought I had a rootkit on my system, so I reloaded the OS. Um, and then I started installing each application individually to see what was going on. It turns out some monitors, external monitors, put out 2.4 gigahertz as their natural frequency. They, they radiate at this level and can interfere with Bluetooth devices. So interesting choice. I am to... running ASUS monitors, and for some reason, their output resonates at the same radio frequency is my mouse. So every once in a while. That explains why monitors have that FCC tag on the back. Yeah. It does warn you right. of emissions. And, and But it's interesting that they would pick the 2.4 gigahertz. I don't think they picked it. Band. I think this is a wash. So there's a range. And, and my mouse, every once in a while, will bump into that range. Because that's the most crowded radio frequency range. Oh, sure. Range. Wi -Fi, the older Wi-Fi was 2.4. So yeah. You would think that they would do whatever they could to keep the emissions out of that range and put it somewhere else. But no. <laughs> They're great monitors, but I just I have to be I have to be careful about how much power I actually use on these monitors. Yeah. I had a microwave oven once and every time that I turned on the microwave oven, my Wi Fi went down. So Really? Yeah. <laughs> because it would it was it was in the same it was in the same frequency range. It would it, it oh. would create interference in the same yeah. range and it would bring down my I remember the, my wifi. the wireless uh, uh, handsets. They were pretty much Wi-Fi, and mm -hmm. you know you had a base station on a mobile phone with an antenna on it, and my Wi-Fi and that that kind of phone were bumping into each other because they're both 2.4. Mm -hmm. I had to bump up to a five gigahertz uh, router for my Wi-Fi, which improved performance immeasurably. Already, sure. there's and, so much less interference in, right, in the right. five gigahertz range. Plus, uh, you know, it was A, a B, C, and uh, and G, so it was you know multiple ways of transmitting the data. And uh, the protocols were much better, but uh, you know, we just keep getting better. Just bump into a problem, solve the problem. Bump into another problem, solve the problem. Uh, Windows, we're waiting for the next one to come out here. They've hinted at a couple of changes. Uh, I, Windows 10, I like it. I don't like it as much as Windows 7, but that's not the problem anymore. Liking something doesn't mean you should stay with it. There's so many security no. issues coming out every day for older operating systems that you're taking enormous risks staying on those older operating systems. I think a lot of people would love to stay with Windows XP. That was probably That's the most stable. popular. Rock hard. But, but once the uh, support to patch the security issues is gone, you, you can't. You just can't stay on that operating system because you, you become, you've got this big bullseye on your back. You become a huge target. Oh, yeah, and, and, the, and the, the tools that come out to, to perform those hacks become easier to obtain and easier to use. So script keys, mm -hmm. people in, yeah. that have never hacked before can take a little tool and point it at you and you can take click Metasploit go. And, and, yeah, Metasploit. And in like 30 seconds, they've got your machine. You've got it, yeah. Well, let's take a little break. When we come back, we'll talk about our um, least favorite president of all time, that's our current president, the orange-headed buffoon. And uh, we're gonna talk about some of the things he's, he's done and uh, how he doesn't think before he actually pulls the trigger. And it's, it's starting to affect us in the technological industry. So until then, uh, people come right back and stay safe. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii. 
every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back to the second half of our show at the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy. I'm here with my colleague, Hal the Networking Guy. And now we're going to talk about our least favorite president. <laughs> We've already talked about the good news. Let's talk about some of the bad news. I think our president tends to have a thought, comes to his head, and he fires something off without thinking through the consequences on the other side. And it's starting to get really old. Uh, let's talk about some of these executive orders that he's done. Oh, but first. Let's talk about uh, how he wants to declassify documents in the Russia investigation mm -hmm. and then changed his mind. So uh, he was saying that the FISA documents, the federal warrants to go, uh, you turn this into a judge and it's uh, security uh, classified so you can't share it with the public. And you say, we need to go monitor this person. Uh, please sign off on this order. Those are FISA warrants. And uh, he's saying that they were illegally obtained and uh, contain false or misleading in, in, uh, information and were based, uh, heavily based on the Steele dossier, if you remember that, from that former MI, uh, MI5 operator, yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, um, that's probably not the case, but he's also changed his mind again. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to declassify them. At the recommendations of all his people around him saying, you really shouldn't do that. That's an ongoing investigation, and we can't throw that information out there in the public mm -hmm. just to save your ass. And I'm, I, I can't believe that we have this kind of president in there. He probably you know, was, was told that one thing, you, you, as you said, you, you, don't, uh, you don't share information about an ongoing uh, in, investigation. That's a longstanding yeah. Policy. Well, for multiple reasons. You share the information, the case could go bad, you could lose the case, uh, witnesses could get uh, corrupted, or, or juries could be corrupted, and you just have so many complications. When the information gets out, you got to keep it secret until you actually present it to a judge and a jury. Yeah. And then besides that, in order to justify this, that it was, you know, this somehow tainted or obtained illegally, he, that he would have to actually present some evidence that would show that, and he probably doesn't have any evidence to show, so... <laughs> He's just using the documents. Yeah. He's in a Twitter war still. <laughs> well, he went out there, and I guess somebody told him he, he should make some executive orders that had to do with technology. And he did make some, and I went and read some of them. The titles are impressive. Always. And the Always. Good titles. However, when you read the document, there's a few issues. Let's go over the first one. This is, uh, we have notes here. The executive order 13800 It's called Strengthening the Cybersecurity of Federal Networks and Critical Infrastructure. Boy, it sounds great, doesn't that it? That sounds wonderful. The problem is when you read the document. Not what it does. In, in I believe, section two of the document, it actually says, we're going to do this using the, um, the guidance from the National Institute of Standards and Technologies Special Publication NIST. 800-53. That's the DOD network standards. So that organization is responsible for making all these standardized documents and mm -hmm. updating them every year so they're current and they're relevant and yeah. they're meaningful. Because technology is changing so Daily. rapidly. It's, yes. a, it's a continuous ongoing process right. to update and maintain these. these Unfortunately, their budget has been slashed by $6.3 million for next year by the President of the United States. Seems contradictory, doesn't it? <laughs> it seems like he didn't think before he pulled the trigger. I mean, he thinks about budget on the one hand, and he thinks about security on the other, but he never says, whoa, does one affect the other? That just doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, we were talking about uh, his security um, on the border. He has just gone all in on ICE and the border security, and he's taken money away from uh, Health and Human Services and the research that we're doing for against cancer and several other diseases. Mm -hmm. And what was the other place you said he took it out of? From FEMA. Took FEMA. Millions of dollars away from FEMA, which seems like odd timing because right now we have, what, forest fires that are devastating. Oh, yeah, California's you know, in flames. We've got yeah. flooding in, you know, on North the East Carolina. Coast. Yeah. We've got hurricanes. We just had storms. one on three of our islands were devastated just a little while ago with our last hurricane. Lane came through and put four feet of water on the big island. So you think if anything, you, you'd want to be strengthening FEMA, not taking away wait, from their budget wait, wait, wait. at this You're time, using but. something I'm, I'm familiar with, but I can't put my, oh, logic. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, logic. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I, so this, I, yeah, there's shouldn't. Trump over here and there's logic way over there. I, they've, uh, they've never met. They just, they don't come together. There's uh, ego and sexism and misogynism and immaturity and stupidity. And that has met Trump multiple times. I mean, they're good friends. Those are the skeletons in his closet and uh, there's no closet door. You walk in his house and you look to the right and you see all that plus the incestuous uh, nature of his relationship with uh, his daughter. Which I think is kind of weird. And it's not just its not just an ordinary closet. It's like one of those big walk-in closets that's like a room to itself, right? So you can walk in there and have a party with all the skeletons, oh, yeah. right? I'm getting, I'm getting really tired of uh, thinking there's some good news on the horizon and maybe Trump's actually done something right. And this, that's just not the case. Uh, let's go over a couple of the other executive orders that sounded great, but, mm -hmm. but... So we have uh, 13803, reviving the National Space Council. So this council was created in 1989, but it kind of just died on the vine by 1993. There's, there's no participation, no motion, no nothing by 1993. It just died. Uh, he wants to revive it. The problem is when you look at the members of the council. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen uh, a cabinet meeting where Trump invites the media in and all those people around him say, thank you, Mr. President, for being such an incredible dictator, and um, we're going to praise Mussolini, and good it's job good. being a fascist. And everybody says the same thing. Well, it just so happens that roundtable, those are all the members of this council. Mm -hmm. So they, put, they plugged a couple of positions in there. Uh, but space is actually in their job title. But one of them's from NASA, who's being run by a Trump appointee who's a climate denier. What do you think of this? Is that council going to do us any good whatsoever? It seems odd to have Space Council with, you know, with people who don't necessarily believe in science. I, I think, to me, that those two things... It's like the Flat Earth Society doing yeah. <laughs> a scientific project. And they're chaired by Pence. Our vice president. I think maybe uh, Pence didn't have enough to do, so they threw him in there, uh, basically under the bus, because this, this council is not going to be able to do anything meaningful. They're, they're the same cabinet members that were appointed by Trump. They're mm -hmm. it's the, the Secretary of State. Why is the Secretary of State on the Space Council? Well, he might have something to do with uh, the new Space Force that they want to come up with. Which is kind of dumb, right, when you think about a space force, because we've already got the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force with assets that relate to space. Especially right? the, the, the Air Force right now. It does, you know. They monitor the satellites. They monitor space, the yeah. trash orbiting the Earth, right? They, they, have, they track all this stuff. Uh, they help NASA with the launches. Uh, they have to coordinate with the FAA for almost every single thing they do. Uh, so the infrastructure for a space force is already in the Air Force. I, I've, I've heard both sides of this, and, they, and there are some, uh, you know, experts who will say that the Space Force is not such a bad idea, but my fear is how is it going to be You've got to have a pretty good justification, right? So um, right after World War II in 1947, the U.S. Army Air Corps, or U.S. Army Air Force, which was, my grandfather was in it all the way through World War II, there was no Air Force yet. In 47. America decided, well, we need a specialized force that deals just with air power. And so we made the Air Force. However, we had already fought two wars with aircraft in it before we realized we have all these aircraft and all these personnel de dedicated to 
air power and air superiority, this is a logical move. We don't have that for space. We've got a space station we share with a bunch of other countries and we've got a bunch of satellites. Mm -hmm. Space Force? I don't know if it's worth branching off until we actually do something. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want to fight a war. But there's got to be some other justification. I can't think of one. But if, you're, if Air Force is already handling it and they seem to be doing an okay job, I, nothing's fallen and hit me on the head. Nothing's okay. ruined my house. I don't see space junk falling into the ocean all the time. Mars hasn't invaded us. Not yet. yet. So. Not yet. Uh, Trump may tweet something about that very soon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the horizon. Let's, let's look at another executive order real quick. Sure. Um, uh, 13794, executive order, establishment of the American Technological Council. Sounds good, doesn't it? Awesome. Same technology members council. as the other cyber uh, the other space council. They're all technology experts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. They are. <laughs> it just seems like they have different council names, and they just sit same around the people. same table. And they, okay, now we're going to do the American Technological Council. Uh, let's go around the table and get ideas. <laughs> okay, we're switching over to the uh, Space Council. Let's call ourselves the League of Justice. <laughs> yeah, right. I would love to see that. It's hilarious. A Space Force and the Justice League, right? Great. We also have enhancing the effectiveness of um, the agency chief information officers, uh, Executive Order uh, 13833. Sounds fantastic. I have always, and the mission paragraph on the on first paragraph of this uh, order was great, and I agreed with it. It, it said we have to make CIOs uh, more powerful. We have to give them more opportunity to affect change. And I agree. CIOs have been in the background for too long. We need to bring them out. CISOs, the Chief Information Security Officer, should have a broad range of abilities to secure the organization. Because they, they often have a lot of responsibility, but not a lot of power. Oh, that's the, yeah. They can't tell anyone what to do, but you yet get blamed, they're responsible yeah. to make sure everyone is doing you know, it's right. the right things. So, so this one's a little scary in that, it, down further, there's some sneaky wording in there. And this is for federal organizations now. The CIOs of federal organizations have unlimited authority to, quote, Eliminate unnecessary IT management functions. Based on the membership of these other two councils that we've just been talking to, I do not trust this is going to be implemented correctly. And I think we might lose some actual necessary IT management functions. It might functions. be a bit of a partisan bend to it. Do you think it might be possible? It could be. It could be. Well, we're out of time. That show went wow. like lightning fast. We covered all the material we're supposed to cover. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Thank you. See you next all right, time. everybody. Uh, next week, I will not be here. This ho uh, show will be hosted by Andrew, the security guy, Andrew Lanning, the co-founder of Integrated Security Technologies here in Hawaii. He's been doing a great job. Uh, securing Hawaii with physical and electronic security systems for the last 20 years, and he's going to have a great show for you next week. And after that, I'll be back on October 5th. Until then, everybody, stay safe.